गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस ब्यूटिफुल स्नैप विच यू सी इज फ्रॉम द ग्रेट बैरियर रीफ इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया दिस इज वॉट वॉज हैंडेड ओवर टू अस इन आवर जनरेशन डू यू नो वॉट वी हैव मेड टू दिस पर्टिकुलर प्लेस this is what it has become now in 2016 70% of the coral reef has been declared dead and future generation will be not seeing this isn't it a shame and this has been got about by various ecological mistakes which we have done and one of them is the ballast water let me tell you what is a ballast water when a ship goes from one place to the other without cargo it takes in water for stability but when you take in the cargo you have to throw this water out unfortunately this water has got microorganisms and like a typical immigrant it is far more hard working and it actually destroys the local flora and fauna so there obviously this will not be allowed and there is a regulation which is going to be coming in probably late but better late than never can say whatever is remaining and this will be monitored by the international maritime organization which is a un body so obviously you know at one go when the regulation comes in close to 50000 ships will need to have this device and the market is in billions of dollars so all sorts of the biggest of the multinational billion dollar companies got into the act you name it and they were there hyundai samsung what uh, watsila uh, you just name them i mean alpha laval westphalia ge you know the biggest of the names and they were trying to solve the problem with and in early 2000 there was actually no solution for this particular problem and that's why they all wanted to do this and in this whole thing i thought let me also try my hand at it so sitting in my bedroom i thought you know maybe i'll also be able to solve a thing like this so let me give you a scenario of this it's like you know when you're sitting in your bedroom and you think that uh, uh, you can just take on reliance something as absurd as that so you can imagine i mean if people don't call you hair brain what else can they call you but i thought you know it is possible amazingly just 7 years later in 2013 we had a company for ballast water treatment we had done the preliminary trials we have two of the most marquee investors possible in india godrej and mariwala and we had debt fund from world bank no less also the government of india was backing us they had also told the national classification society to vet us at every step and we thought we are on our way with the trials we actually submitted our application to the imo which is the international maritime organization the whole thing sounded just like a dream and let me tell you a small background of what i am so that you know that how absurd the whole thing is i come from a absolutely a middle class family my father and mother were both teachers my father was a professor in iit bombay my mother was a nursery school teacher and growing up in the iit campus itself was uh, uh, Mm, absolutely i mean it's a educational experience and in fact much later in life i came to know that uh, not everyone is a phd and in my childhood i used to think everyone is a phd it's like you know a very normal thing to be so anyway so here i was and like all good campus kids i got into iit bombay and uh, then i did the unthinkable 
after two years, I quit, much to everyone's shock that what is this guy doing? And I went on to become a marine chief engineer. So here you can see me in my glory days. So after uh, I was sailing almost continuously, during that time, if you actually get off from the ship, you will not get a ship because the recession was so much. So I sailed for almost continuously for four years. And uh, then I realized that, you know, the company said that you have to get off. You can't do, be doing something like this. So when I got off, I had 18 months of paid leave on me. So I really, I mean, it was something so shocking. Like, what do you do with 18 months of paid leave? I had thought that I will do an MBA. So I thought I will, you know, appear for GMAT. And just for a lark, I had applied for CAT also as a practice test because there was no time for me to get off from the ship and then prepare for CAT. So with uh, precisely eight days of preparation, because on ship you really don't have time to do all these things. Eight days of preparations, horror of horrors, I got into I am Bangalore. So it was like uh, too much of a shock for me in that direct, what is this going on in life? So anyway, from uh, I am, I went to ITC, that was my first job. Then. I was uh, part of a team which set up a Norwegian multinational in India. And when the, uh, they did the process for setting up the Norwegian multinational in India, and when the actual investments were to come, I got uh, passed over and a young Norwegian came on top of me. I said, this is just unacceptable. So I just quit. And I said, I will do whatever I can. I will be on my own. Because this can actually happen to absolutely anybody. And more so in today's world, where you just don't know what is. It's so unpredictable. Then started the real fun. I did whatever came my way. You know, you can't be a, when you're a first generation entrepreneur with absolutely no business genes anywhere. You have to do whatever comes your way. So I did a port project, which uh, very interestingly at that time was uh, India's biggest PPP project. And uh, I was part of a consortium as a sutradhar. Then I did uh, business plans for container freight station, route planning. I even wrote a book on ship recycling, which was like, I really, I don't know why I did it, but I did it. So in 2004, a very interesting thing happened that uh, there was a Indian company, uh, Indian shipyard, a premier shipyard of that time and uh, now defunct and an Israeli company, they came together and they were trying to solve this ballast water problem. And somehow, you know, people thought that this guy is an appropriate mad fellow. Get hold of this guy and make him go around all over the country to see what exactly is happening. They had a particular technology. In fact, three te different technologies which they wanted to combine together to kill microorganisms, what I told you, uh, before, they, uh, before the is discharged from the ship. So I went around all over the country. I had come to Chandigarh also at that time uh, to figure out what is happening. And this actually came about because in 2003, uh, India and Israel signed a MOU where they would do joint research. And uh, they will be actually be funding them to some extent, both the countries. But at the end of six months of this particular thing where I went all over the country, uh, I realized that what they are telling me is absolutely, it's not possible on board ship because I, have be, I had been a chief engineer on board ship and I knew that, you know, what things are possible and what is not possible. So I, in fact, told them that, you know, it's not uh, on, you cannot do this. By which time they had also lost interest. And, you know, I went on doing my other things. Then in uh, 2005, all this happened in 2004. In 2005, suddenly I got up one day in the morning, early in the morning, absolutely sweating. You know, it's like, it was like one flash of light. I was wondering what has happened. Then it dawned on me that uh, all these big companies, Hyundai and, you know, who I just named all of them, they, the buildings don't do the research, nor do that manicured lawns do the research. It must be some guy who's actually the brains behind it. And it will be typically be only one guy because 100 guys cannot think the same way. 
So I said, uh, my God, this is such a illuminating thought. That means if I can just outthink that one guy, you know, it is possible. Let you know, you can do whatever. And that was, uh, you know, the root of, uh, I said, my God, this is like, uh, uh, I've, I've gone into something different, even more hairbrained than ever I ever was. But then I thought, let me study a bit. And and that's what I started doing at the IIT Bombay library. That uh, I went and I was starting to study what was going on exactly in this ballast water field. And I took the help of uh, my neighbor, uh, Professor Sukhatme. Now he is a absolutely, he's an ex-director of IIT Bombay and uh, one of the top uh, scientists of India. He was even a, a very a big guy in the Atomic Energy Commission. So he has been my mentor right from beginning. I know him since I was in half pants. So he said, you know, the best guy for this is, uh, you, know, you go to National Chemicals Lab and there is a Dr. B.D. Kulkarni. Now I had heard of B.D. Kulkarni. He is one of those revered scientists and uh, a deputy director of NCL. There are hundreds and hundreds of PhDs there. And here I am, I'm not even a graduate because the marine engineering didn't even give you a graduation. It's, a, it's not even a diploma, it's a certificate. So how do I go and talk to this uh, person? So I, when I was driving down from Bombay to Pune, so I was just thinking now, appointment I have got, what to do now? Uh, what to talk to him? He'll just ask me some two, three things and I'll be falling flat down. I don't know anything of anything of whatever this thing in detail. I just know it superficially. Then I said, okay, <laughs> give it a good try. So he, I was ushered into the ante room of the deputy director. And like you have in barber shops, you know, Femina, Fem film fair and all those things. And when you are waiting for your haircut, you are just seeing that. In his ante room, it was the scientific magazines. And uh, I said, okay, since it is there and I have to kill time, by which time I had actually gone blank also, because what am I going to talk to him? So I started reading a magazine. And there was a very, very interesting article about, it, it had a snap of a crustacean. Now that is something for me was the last thing I should ever read. Because uh, in school, I actually got a zero in biology. I don't know how I achieved it. So I mean, it had uh, put the fear of God in me that anything to do with all these things, it's not for me. So anyway, so I started reading it and there was this uh, crustacean, a uh, shrimp, which by snapping its claws, it shoots a jet of water and it creates a bubble, which when it collapses, it actually sends shock waves to kill its prey. Now this actually just, uh, you know, I said, my God, if I can do this in my, this thing, I can kill microorganisms in the seawater. So I read it slightly more carefully. And let me just show you in a small video what exactly it is. Yeah, this is the snapping shrimp. It's got an oversized snapper claw. This is the prey. So the moment it sees its prey and it's in its vicinity, it opens its claws and shoots a jet of water. You just see what happens. It's there in slow motion, 30,000 30, frames per second. Now just see this, it's shooting a jet of water. You see that flash of light? That bubble is collapsing at that point and there is a shock wave created. Now, just for simplicity and ease of understanding, it's like when a plane breaks a sound barrier, you know, the earth, the glasses shatter. And this is exactly that. The air is a compressible medium. This is an incompressible medium. So that's the only difference. And that shatter kills the microorganisms. It lacerates the microorganism. So with this, I jettisoned all my previous ideas. And when I was called in, here I go to meet Dr. B.D. Kulkarni. He's asking me, you know, this, that, and other. I told him, you know, I have a new idea. And this is what it is. And uh, do you think, uh, you know, it's possible to kill microorganisms in a large scale with a thing like this? The first expression on his face was utter shock. 
how does this layman know of anything like this? Because it was, I won't even say emerging technology. It was like, you know, still in the, uh, people didn't know why it was happening and all these things. That was the first article which had ever come out on this particular phenomena in the world. So he was too shocked and ridiculously pleased that here is a layman, you know, who's uh, thinking in these sort of things. So he immediately called uh, a fellow scientist who's a Bhatnagar award winner and a mathematical modeling uh, expert. So with this, uh, we filed a patent and uh, that uh, patent was, my name was not there in it. So I actually wrote to the government that this is absolutely unfair and they returned that patent to me first time ever for 1000 rupees. There were uh, three labs working together on that and uh, that was, uh, I mean, if you can take on the government for such things, ultimately it works. Anyway, the bizarre thing happened after this. Let me go back to the submission. Our entry was taken back by the government. Absolutely no reason was given to me. I filed RTIs to figure out because the World Bank told me that if you have to, if you have to condone your loan, you'll have to file an RTI for some paperwork. Anyway, so we tried, uh, we said that this is a no-go now. We can't do anything. So we tried uh, other things and uh, in each of them we failed because uh, the we were actually having a gleaming technology, but we were force fitting it onto a business, which was just not working. So one day, my partner at the time, he told me that, uh, you know, I'm working on a hand pump and uh, for killing microorganisms. And he told me what he's doing. Now that was, for me, a totally, totally a different uh, uh, thing. And I realized that it is absolutely unworkable. It's a great academic project, but it is not a, a viable thing. So anyway, I uh, worked on that. I turned the design upside down and I made a reactor which can be fitted in a borewell hand pump and operated by a 60 uh, year old woman. And uh, that's what uh, we actually achieved. Now, the implication of this particular reactor is huge. There are around 300 to 400 million people who are, uh, who use uh, borewell uh, water for drinking. And that's the only one in India alone. And uh, also, uh, what uh, we did was, uh, since it was meant for a 60 year old woman, we said that it should be maintenance free. It should not have any consumables. It should be very, very low cost, no behavioral change. And you know, all these sort of things. Uh, and we actually achieved it. And uh, the moment we achieved this, uh, lots of, uh, uh, I would say, accolades uh, kept coming in from, and by the way, my uh, workshop was my bedroom and this is a part of my bedroom. Uh, so, because uh, after that I had no place to do a work. So, and my building terrace was uh, my uh, test bed. So here is that product which you see is holding and uh, a lot of accolades which uh, keep coming in, you know, from all over. This was a very interesting one. We were given a public reception in a uh, uh, in a village with a tutari, which is like you know that uh, when kings enter, you da da pa 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 and you know all that. And then the shock came that uh, you have to give a speech in Marathi. That's when I pushed my wife, who's the co-founder of the company. I said, "You do it now," and she's never forg forgiven me for that. So anyway, the other thing is we've uh, given it to uh, villagers for trying out. Immediately that particular uh, hand pump gets totally crowded and this is what uh, happens to it. And to the extent that this particular village, they all got together and uh, pooled in money. And uh, in fact, this is the biggest uh, accolade I've ever got. This uh, check written by money collected from the villages. So obviously, if you see that, you know, this uh, entrepreneurship is uh, not a 
walk in the park you have to have lot of lot of resilience you have to have lot of perseverance lot of passion and ultimately when you take the plunge you have to keep your eyes open you have to believe in luck you'll have to think that uh, you know you can do it and at some place things fall into place and uh, there are people who come to help you but uh, it's definitely not uh, for the people who are weak in their heart because uh, failures will definitely be there at uh, each and every point you have to just go ahead and uh, see how best you can uh, make the best of the situation and that's it so for all the people who are uh, going to become entrepreneurs all the best to you all and uh, wish us also thanks